Hey, what's up guys, Tubby here. In this video, we'll be discussing Micro as an AD carry player, with a specific focus on trading and how to land your abilities. This video will test your Micro knowledge as an AD carry and support player through different crystals I made in the video. So with that being said, let's get right into the video and good luck on the quiz of Micro. Taking a look at the first game, we are playing Ezreal with Karma, into Tristana and Set. Planning is really important before the laning phase itself starts with the knowledge of the matchup and Hecarim starting blue buff. What would your plan be going into this lane? If you guys are a bit confused of what to do, I also got you guys some ideas here. A. Fake leashing, confusing the enemies of where Hecarim starts. B. Moving up in lane to try and create a slow push towards ourselves by pulling the wave. C. Prevent the enemies from walking up by poking them. D. Fast pushing to make sure we'll get an early level advantage. If you guys need more time to think about this, feel free to pause the video, but here's the answer. So walking into the lane, you can see Eswell instantly push out one minion, and he doesn't do this to fast push the wave, but he actually does it to create a slow push by creating one extra minion on his side than the other enemy's side. Now the goal is to step up like they do here, and then just poke to Stana every time he walks up, as you can see. So Tristana right now does not want to give up any minions like Eswell and Kamen Skull is, and therefore they just end up punishing him really hard by Q spamming him every time he walks up to CS. If you were to stand in a game like this, my advice would be that you just try and CS the minions you think you can without taking any damage, but otherwise just let the wave come into you because it is slow pushing into you regardless. But here you can see Tristana not even respecting the level 2 from Ezreal and Karma and therefore they just all in him and get his flash really early on in the lane. And now because he's so low, he can barely walk up the farm on the turret, so now Karma and Ezreal can apply a lot of pressure in his lane because they're just gonna keep hard shoving now because they got him so low and he has no potion that he'll basically die if he walks up as you can see he does here to get another minion. So you can see how creating a slow push and then just zoning the enemies out of lane is really helpful usually when you're playing like in this lane two ranged into a melee and a ranged. Another thing to notice about this lane is that Karma and Espel are very heavy pokers with Qs while uh, Set and Tristana are pretty low ranged early on in the game and therefore this is another reason to why you would want to slow push into just trying to zone them because they can't really walk up farming in the early game and if they do you'll most likely end up getting a first split like as well and Karma did in this lane. So looking back at the questions, if you chose the answer C, you chose the correct answer. Good job. Alright, moving on to the next situation. Taking a look at another early game, this time we are playing Draven and Fresh into Kog'Maw and Lulu, and we actually do have to lease our jungler as well this time so we won't be arriving as early to the lane as we did in the last situation. Another thing that's pretty important to pay attention to is that the Aatrox is showing at level 1, so we therefore assume that the enemy jungler is starting at the blue buff considering that the enemy bot lane was also gone. So what will you guys now do with this knowledge? Once again, if you're a bit unsure about what to do, I again made some scenarios. But I'm still hoping you guys take a guess before I show you these A, B, C, and D. Anyways, let's get into it. A, playing for level 2 to all in. B, playing safe because Kog'Maw and Lulu is stronger. C, trying to set up a freeze by only last hitting the minions. Or D, prevent the enemies from walking up by poking them. Before showing the results, let's just analyze this lane. Draven and Fresh is very strong all in us, but the issue is Lulu and Kog'Maw is also very strong during the early game with the Lulu shield onto the Kog'Maw with his W. Knowing this, Draven and Fresh has to play around the Kog'Maw W to try and avoid fights when he has it up. In this game, Fresh has the support item that smites minions, which means that we have a very strong push for the level 2, and if he saves them for the second wave, which you can see he does, then Lulu, who doesn't have this support item, can't really match that push and therefore they can't duel the level 2. That means that Draven and Fresh now has the opportunity to play for the all-in level 2 because the enemies can't match it. You can also see that they tried to kill the Kog'Maw by flashing onto them level 2, but unfortunately Fresh missed his hook and with their plane now failing, they quickly have to make up a new one. In this game you can see how they keep playing aggressive without pushing the wave too hard 
allowing the, a second wave to come in. And as soon as that second wave comes in, they crash the wave. And with Kog'Maw being low, because he got hit by a second hook, he can contest this wave. And therefore, he can just watch them push in the wave. With now a pretty big wave being crashed under the Kog'Maw and Lulu's turret, they decide to do a Cheetah Recall. Cheetah Recalling is very effective when you have a big wave under the enemy turret and are unsure of if you're about to get ganked or you feel like it's risky staying. In this case, Rush had no summoners, so continuing the push would be a bit greedy, and especially considering that they weren't re Draven and Fresh weren't really healthy because they had spent a lot of resources on their all in, it would just be greedy to stay because if, let's say, a mid laner came down from a roam, they would most likely die to the gank. So, looking back at the opportunities you guys could have picked, A, playing for level 2 to all in would have been the correct one. Even though Fresh and Draven failed initiating the plan, they still played for the plan, and as soon as that one failed you could see how they instantly made up a new one which were to do a cheetah recall if we look at another game where all of the odds actually didn't turn into my favor and i made some of the wrong decisions then it's this game right here where i'm playing jinx with a braum into a senna and esrel we didn't have to leash in this lane but as you guys can see from the beginning beginning of the game me and braum both got chunked down a little bit because of how the game started out and because i made the wrong decision of getting greedy and trying to walk to my turret from the right side when I should have gone up to my blue buff and all the way around, which would have saved me an entire s q of damage. With the current state of the game and Senna having no flash, what would you guys do when you arrive to the lane? If you need more time to think of your own answer, then make sure to pause the video. But otherwise, here comes the suggestions. A. Prevent the enemies from walking up by poking them. B. She center with an all-in from the bush. C. Trying to set up a phrase by only last hitting the minions. Or D. Playing aggressive early to achieve level 2 first. Okay, if we look at what I actually did, I, I would say this is one of these games where I make the uh, wrong this mistake. And me and Braum also has very different like opinions of what we should be doing this lane. So here you can see that Braum wants to do the cheese all in on Senna. I think everyone I talk to, I've been talking to quite a lot of people through this play, thinks this, this is not the right play to do because they're both ranged and it's just like they're gonna kite us out there. So that's no way we're gonna make that work. And now you can see how I just get chunked down from doing that as well. So it's like, because we were like, I just had to like, not commit to what Grom was doing and just fall back because now I'm falling like really low on HP and we're still playing for level 2 while being this slow. It just all feels like a I don't know fiesta like this is definitely just not the right outcome of a lane and then you can see how we literally all in level 2 with 150 HP and somehow it like pretty much almost works out. I, I get out with like 5 HP and this is all from an engage where we had 150 HP where we actually just traded summoners with me and Esrel. So this is like worth it for us. Braum ends up going all in the center here and trades one for one. So because of this working, I've been so confused about if it's like what I should be doing or not. Because if we just like look at the other opportunities, like if we play safe and let them push into us, the thing about that in an s center lane is that they can hold us on the turret the entire game. Like, they will literally have a shove then and just keep poking us out and it'll be impossible to play the lane. So, letting them just get prior is also not the right thing, which is why it's been a really difficult uh, answer to find. And I've just been asking, like, so many high elo players and a lot of them has also been really unsure about what to do because... We played like absolute psychopaths and it ended up working, but I also know that if the enemies were like better players, this should never work, right? So it's kind of like a bit confusing, I would say. Uh, and then we end up killing Estwell as well, and then, you know, we're kind of back on top. So I think just looking back at this and with all the people I talked to, as you guys can see here, Wukong started top side and then he came bud. The best play would probably have been to try and hold the freeze instead of doing the psychopath play that ended up working, but it just shouldn't. And now Senna dies too, right? Like the enemies have played this really bad. Uh, but you can see like she had no flash from level 1, so if we could potentially hold the freeze here and Wukong comes down like this, like he just did, we'll end up killing them and it'll be worth it first. So therefore, my personal opinion, 
from you know my experience as a master slash low grandmaster player is that you should freeze here because then I burned her flash and then let Wukong come down uh, early game because he puffed up to but that means C trying to set up a freeze by only last hitting the minions would be the correct answer. I hope this example gave you guys some kind of idea that even though you make a play the wrong way or you make an incorrect play, it can still work out into your favor. So it's pretty important when you make incorrect plays to realize, okay, the play was bad even though it worked. Because even though the play might be good in this game specifically, it can actually ruin like multiple games in the future if you don't realize that it shouldn't have worked. Because if you try to make an incorrect play, you know, in multiple games, what you should see if it's an incorrect play is that it'll fail and it won't work in multiple games. And what me and Braum did here could really easily have lost us the entire lane, and it should have lost us the entire lane in this in, in this kind of elo, uh, if it weren't for Wukong coming and saving us at our ass, and us somehow trading, you know, one for one while we en engage with 150 HP onto them who almost had full HP. Like, it just makes absolutely no sense that this play worked, but it did work, and it turned out to be hugely in our favor this game, and I think that's also the reason to I ended up snowballing the game. But yeah. That does not mean that I'll ever try and make that play again though. Like next time, I'll try and make the freeze and see how that goes. Looking at the next scenario, I'm playing Tristana and Nico. And as you guys can see here, we are about to take the first turret of the game at 6 minutes. We're being engaged on, but the minions do end up finishing off the turret. And here, I'm just kiting away and going up to Mr. John, who's fighting the cat instead, because I can see my Nico is dead. Once I do that, I jump back down because now a Kelly decides to teleport back onto them and they're kind of trapped. So we just end up finishing these two guys off too. We then go to the Drake and take that one as well. What do you guys think my play should be once I'm done with taking the Drake? If you need more time to think of your own answer, make sure to pause the video now. Because here comes the suggestions. A. Resetting, cashing in our goal to proceed going bot lane to snowball even harder. B. Rotating mid to take the tower, having easy access to both lanes. C. Going topside to deny Kindred's passive stack under Scuttle and looking for her jungle camps. D. Swap lane with the top laner to play for the Herald. If you guys need more time to think, then pause the video now because here comes the answer. So as you guys can see, I help my jungler with the drake and then I actually back and go directly to top lane. The reason to I decide to go for top lane here is one, the top laner has still five stacks or plates on his turret. And the herald spawns at eight minutes and uh, the game is what, seven minutes right now. So we just want to play for the herald. The reason to we want to play top side for the herald is because there is no bot lane objectives anymore. We got the turret and we got the drake. Which means we have around 6 minutes till we gotta be bot for the next strike. Therefore, right now we have nothing to do on the bot side on the map. And top lane is really isolated, so therefore it's really easy to take the 5 plates. And then I have to go for the Herald because we're so overfed. So if you answered D, swap lane with the top laner to play for the Herald, you are correct. Congrats. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it opened your mind on some new ideas or plans that you guys should be making when you're playing your game and that it's really important to always plan ahead what you're about to do and you don't just play the game because that way you will autopilot and you know the best way to climb is by not autopiloting and always having a plan. So therefore I hope this video made some sense and I hope it gave you some ideas of how to improve. and. Let me know in the comments how many of these four questions you got correct. It would be dope to see. If you guys have any video ideas, please make sure to leave them down in the comments as well. And if you are looking for coaching, there's a link down in the description on to my Discord where you can find all the information there. And if you guys want to watch me live, I stream on Twitch every weekday. League of Legends pretty much every time. Sometimes a few other games, um, but it's pretty much always League of Legends. So if you want to watch some League of Legends gameplay, Feel free to come by my stream, it'd be awesome to have you guys there. Otherwise, peace out. I hope you all have a good time watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.